You need some more speed records in this day and age. You need coverage. Coverage? Oh, you mean them little root weevils that crawl around popping off cameras in your face? Those root weevils write history. Many of you know that quote by Jack Nicholson and a few good men. You can't handle the truth. Well, you can, and Event Horizons will give you those truths. So when you're mad as hell and not going to take it anymore from that memorable scene in Network, you'll know just what to do. We will draw you in and become your news addiction at Event Horizons. Join us Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Time at freedomslips.com. Revolution Radio. Our world team members are Dennis Fetcho, John Ilias, David Dunger, Hila Cass, MD, Melanie Richton, Jim Mars, Paula Harris, John Trallo, Maria Payan, Christopher Husser, DODDS, Jonathan Orchard, and me, your anchor, Dr. Robin Falco. If uh, you decide not to volunteer, it will not be held against you in any way. Sounds dangerous. It is. Very dangerous. Count me in. That's right here. Revolution Radio. Freedomslips.com. Where information never sleeps. Now it's time for Researchers Radio Live. Broadcasting worldwide with your hosts, Joe Kiernan and Dave Stanett. Our focus is on delivering the unknown truths about lost historical events, UFOs, and so much more. If you were expecting to be underwhelmed, then you have been listening to your parents' radio a bit too long. This is where facts get separated from conspiracies. So turn up your volume and join us on our journey into the universal mind, where experience, thoughts, and ideas meet the infinite. So stop wandering around in darkness and follow us into the light. Without further delay, here is tonight's program of Researchers Radio Live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Researchers Radio Live. I'm your host, Joe Kiernan, along hosted with our main man, Dave Stanett, who is here, present, and accounted for. Dave Stanett, what's up, man? What's up? What's up, baby? What are you doing? How are you doing? Everything's cool over here on my end. Tim, oh, I'm all sun- Tim, here. Hurting. Hurting. You're hurting? What you, what, you were out doing yard work? Oh, no, I was dude, no, I was out, <laughs> I was out swimming and sunning today, so I'm, I, you know, old white boy got freaking hammered. Excuse me for accusing you of doing some yard work, man. I know. <laughs> I apologize. Well, that's cool. At least you're enjoying the weekend. Oh, yeah. We're close to summertime. Summer equinox. Right. Only a uh, solstice, rather, just uh, right around the corner. Looking forward to it. Nice long day. I'll tell you, man, I really do like it when it's, uh, when it's still daylight, uh, 9 o'clock at night. I could get used to that. It's too bad it, yeah, it goes you. as quick as it comes, man. I'm with you, bro. Weather's been really good here. It's been a little hot during the day, but overall, it's been fantastic, man. Just uh, some of those r- random uh, thunderstorms, lightning storms that roll through. And they're usually they're usually impressive, man. I enjoy those, to be honest with you. I really do. They're the they're the fierce ones that just pop up out of nowhere and just throw down some serious lightning and thunder. I yeah, I posted some pictures stuff. Friday, man, because we had some really mean looking. And it's funny because everybody all over has been posting these like really mean looking storm clouds rolling into their area. And it's like, yeah, mean stuff is everywhere. Oh, so yeah. You posted a couple photos. I did. Yeah. Of some storms. Yeah. I saw Dave's too, man. They were pretty cool. They were cool. It was a lot scarier than it looked. It, was, it looked like I was driving into like a, it looked like a, the, like the Milky Way, it's like the rest of the sky was kind of light on both sides, but there's this big black like ribbon that just ran through the center of it. And you're like, yeah, that's really unusual. <laughs> now, I'm sure this has been over broadcasted, but I have to mention it for talking about storms. Did anybody? I'm sure you guys saw this or heard about it. The video of those those uh, guys out in the Midwest filming that that uh, tornado. No, right I, next I, to, I, oh, wow. I did not see this. Oh Tell man, you've got to check it out. It's crazy. The the it's a vivid video of these. Brave souls. Some may call them brave. Some may say other words. 
But uh, <laughs> holy crap, they're in the they live in trailers out in the Midwest, and this tornado's coming through. I'm sure our listeners have seen it. It's pretty. It was a pretty popular, <laughs> you know, viral video, basically. But uh, yeah, look into that. I'll see if I can find it and shoot well, it. Well, that's over pretty to you. cool. So what they were they were just a little closer than they should be. Way too close. And uh, and they and they survived apparently. Oh, okay. I, I don't know how. Yeah, I, no way. They had one last year, Tim, and it was like some old woman, and it was like out in the Midwest, I'm assuming. And uh, they were filming it right out the front door, and there was a huge tornado bearing down on her house. And that woman was evoking every name of Jesus that she could evoke. I mean, she was standing <laughs> on the front porch in complete defiance, like quoting Jesus and going after it. And that thing just moved around, the, the, the basically around her house. And Allison, Allison Cruz actually turned me on to it, and I was just like, yeah, I'm just like, she must like be in like really good standing with the Lord because that thing was just should have taken her out. I mean, it was just like huge and it was bearing down. It was like all rumbling and you're like, she's toast. And it was <laughs> like, holy mackerel. You know, now it's just like, how do you like that one? I'm just like, that's bizarre. Some of the was, uh, really don't know, number one, like how they survive. They don't I don't we get even... freak tornadoes up here in, in yeah, uh, the Hudson do. Valley. And uh, a couple years back, not too long ago, right, right off, off of uh, Route 84. In fact, if you drive out there, I haven't seen it, but apparently there is a leveled section of woods that's just completely knocked down where the tornado came through. And to me, that, that's just – you don't see that around here. Right. But, you don't see it uh, no. north of New York City that often. Tim, wh uh, when was that? When was that? Oh, I think it was like uh, 2012, something okay. like that. It wasn't that long ago. Well, I yes, I'm, see, Tim, up on the mountain, and I think it was the other side of the mountain because we were fly fishing, and it was like a big story because you, you never really hear of tornadoes landing in the middle of like of the mountains. Mm -hmm. and it's, you know, and That's right. It's usually in the plains or something like that. But one of these things touched down this little town, and it just trashed. Like, wow, look at the devastation. But nobody there expected to have a tornado up in the mountains like that. You know, your elevation is pretty good, and you just don't see them up there. I remember a few years ago, uh, where in Tim's area where he is now, it might be somewhere around 1990, somewhere around there, where uh, just outside of the, uh, I guess it might even be the town of Newburgh, not the city of Newburgh, but uh, a tornado had hit an elementary school. Uh, oh, cold! That's right down the road. Yeah. I mean, that, well, well, during, maybe not during lunchtime, now, and it, I lived it wasn't right too good. There. Yeah, that was not. That, <sighs> that was did not have good hand. outcomes. Yeah. The Coldenham Elementary School. Right, I remember not, that story. That's not far yeah. from you at all. There was a bunch of kids in uh, in the cafeteria. The Correct. cafeteria had these really large windows, um, and I remember the stories of kids hiding under their desks and chairs and whatnot were just flying around. Thing just tore right through the school. It was pretty. It was devastating. Yeah, I mean, it, it was absolutely terrible because it, it, quite a few of the youngsters lost their lives. But yeah, it's it have was. Have you guys ever seen a tornadoes chaser show? Because I've always wondered. Oh, yeah. They have that. Like really badass car with all the metal planing and the, the grips to lock it into the ground. Did those guys ever – did a tornado ever get on top of that car? Because I've always wondered what that car would do if a tornado got on top of it. I think some of those guys just can't get out of their, their own ways. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that, that's an adrenaline thing I think. No, but I mean I've seen them uh, come close a few times, closer than I'd like to be. But I, I sure would feel a lot better in some of those tank-type uh, vehicles that they make. You know what it is yeah. about those guys? They they have that. I I don't think they have the death wish. I look. I, I I've gone skydiving twice in my life, and it is awesome. I like cliff diving, rock climbing. I I do lots of those types of things. But I like to be in control. When those guys go out there and do that kind of thing, they're at the mercy of nature, and that that's like that's, that's true. just a whole other animal that I cannot. I just well, you can't guys rest. know those tornadoes. They they shift fast, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, the clouds well, don't have to move. They had that one video that was going around, but I, and I don't know if it was Storm Chasers or not, but it was, I think it was just a regular family. But this, this, you know, they thought the tornado was off to the side. And like you said, Joe, it, it starts swinging over to them really quick. Yeah, man. And they ran underneath of a, they parked the car underneath of a bridge overpass and they all ran up like that concrete embankment and hid like in the structural oh, sure. support of that, you know, and that thing came ripping down and they were filming it the whole time. But you're like, there's a lot of power in one of those things. And that's, oh, that's some dangerous stuff. I hope I don't have to, uh, look one of those dead on, you know, for my life from a well, distance. You're in, the Cac you're in the Carolinas. You get them down there. Don't yeah, you? man. We just had them this week. Really? Yeah. yeah just, um, Thursday night, I believe. Yeah. 
Yeah, my brother in law is in Rock Hill and down there in, in uh, South Carolina, and they have the tornado warning horns going off all the time. Yeah, um, I, I believe it was out that way just on Thursday night. That night, where I posted the uh, the lightning and uh, thunderstorm here. Yeah, and you know what was pretty uh, not wild. Uh, another <laughs> another sad story was that lightning video that I posted. That one was uh, that one blasted the house not too far from here. Now, what is the deal? Are we the only country on the planet, or, or do I just not know that that has tornadoes? I mean, do they occur in other countries? Because you don't ever hear about that stuff. I don't think to our scale, Tim. They don't have them to our scale, and here's a little bit of UFO history, boys. Give it to me. Years ago, at one of our conferences, after the Rendlesham Forest uh, incident, and now John and John Burroughs and Jim Penniston, along with uh, Nick Pope, have their new book out which basically details that whole event but when Larry Warren gave his uh, gave his account and that was pretty soon after the event I think Peter Robbins had just got the book out and they showed Rendlesham Forest and it was lush and beautiful and this that and the other and it was like years you know years before the incident and then or, or right after the incident and then they show another picture. A tornado had come through the area not long after the incident happened. And I remarked that it was a – whatever it was, it scoured the area. And I think it maybe it was designed to scour the area. But they got a tornado that literally wiped that entire forest clean. I mean there was not – that pine, those pine trees are so thick, guys, you couldn't see through them. And that entire forest was leveled. It looked like matchsticks and it was gone. And I was just like – so I'd actually gone over to Jim Penniston and and, uh, and had a private conversation with Jim, and uh, I said, Jim, nobody ever seems to mention the fact that you know after this incident and that whole area where it happened, that that they they got a tornado there that totally scoured that whole area. And I've talked to people over there, and they said we don't really get tornadoes. It's you know it's pretty rare that we would get a tornado, much less a one of that magnitude. So I thought that was kind of interesting. That's very interesting because I, first of all, I never heard of it, and uh, and I was under the impression that was a fairly thick forest to the the degree that there was much conversation from the initial UFO reports on how a craft could even uh, n navigate through that forest. Manageable. I'll burn you a copy of that, Joe, and you'll you'll see you can see the presentation for yourself. But for some reason, I've seen that presentation I don't know how many times, and then one night it just stuck to me. I'm like. Holy crap! That I didn't it never even dawn on me that because you never hear. I mean, I've done business in UK for years, and you, you never hear tornadoes in the UK. But this one was in an area that they definitely don't get any. It's kind of more coastal of sorts, and they just don't get that kind of, you know. Right. But it, I mean, it just wiped it clean. I'm just like any hope for any evidence or knowing what whatever went down there is gone now because that whole area is Damn. completely scoured. Well, I, I know there's a few countries that get them, just as you just said, uh, the coastal ones, like water spouts and things like that. And, yeah. and I know uh, some countries like Africa or continent like Africa, uh, they get the dust devils, I guess they call them, or just very yeah, right, small right. tornadoes. I've heard but, that too. But I think, I think America just is key because of the, the Rocky Mountains and the cold Arctic What were they saying, there. Joe, when the Spaniards came here and came up through Florida – like a lot of their journals are like, this is a godforsaken place. They've got these tornadoes and their mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, and everything. Yeah. They're like, Could you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> well, what if that even happened in the Battle of uh, 1812 when the English stormed Washington, burnt the White House, and then got got uh, hammered by two tornadoes yeah. coming from different directions, and they fled. Yeah, Jackson they weeded them all up and left. Yeah, Jackson weeded them up through all the swamps. They had to come up through all the swamps, and by the time they got up to Washington, they're like, hey, man, we're done with this. Right. You know, it's funny. I, I saw a story once where um, the, I guess a town had been rained – it rained frogs, and it was mm -hmm. – uh, you know, they were talking about it being a biblical account, but it was a Midwestern town, and like nobody could understand how the heck this happened. And uh, so some t scientists actually investigated. It turns out that there are bison – that roam the the uh, you know the prairies there or wherever this town is, and what they do is they they roll over and they rub their their fur on the ground and the oils from the fur get into the soil, which kind of solidifies or makes a, uh, a sheen surface. And then when it rains, the water piles up there and it turns into like a little mud bog. Well, these little frogs would 
basically live in this thing. And little tornadoes would come by, pick up these frogs and spit them out. And they just, sh- <laughs> I guess they just started raining down on this town. And that's how. Yeah, and there's a lot of weird accounts. It's, it's, it's rains, all kinds of stuff from fish to frogs to all kinds of, you know, different colors. You know, we've gotten red rain, blood rains, this, that, and the other. But I don't. Our, that, this, our it's, friend it's Surrey as, says that uh, they get water spouts off the south coast of the UK. Yeah. I didn't even know that. That I didn't even know it was that frequent in that area. Yeah, I've whatever went through whatever went through Revolution Forest, that was like a Texas tornado type of t- tornado. I mean, that right. had to have been a freaking monster because you, I haven't seen that kind of devastation. Yeah, you know, unless you you see those little towns where the the tornadoes come down and they basically wipe them everything down to just the the foundation. You know, that's the only thing that's left. That's right. the pad. That's pretty much what Revolution Forest looked like. Man, I know. It, it's it's uh, how long would you say, Dave, that was that the tornado after the claims of the uh, the UFO sightings in Rendlesham? How far apart do you think those two occurrences were? Like with, within the same. I don't think it was all that, as I remember. As I remember, it wasn't all that long afterwards. It was, and I was trying to find information on it, and I couldn't find a lot of information. So I started talking to the people in that area, and they didn't get those type of you know. That was a scouring. I mean, it, would, it was one of those huge ones like that we see down here. It was really scary bastards, you know. Right. But, but they nobody seemed to. One half the people didn't even know what I was talking about. And the other half the people were like, "Well, we just, you know, we get water spouts, but we don't really get, you know, uh, you know, stomping tornadoes." And I saw. Like I said, I'll bring you a copy of the DVD, and you can see for yourself. Oh yeah, I'd love to see it. I saw a water spout uh, while I was on the on the sand here on the coast. About two or three years ago, it was pretty cool. Uh, I didn't feel threatened at all. It kind of was just stationary and maybe just like two or three miles off the coast, but it was pretty cool. And then last year, uh, they have uh, they they built a very large Ferris wheel uh, right on the coast here as well. And last year there were tornadoes right here in our county, and uh, they were they were close enough that I was actually quite concerned because of the way they were heading and. And I'll tell you, I would have been nervous as hell being in that giant sky wheel, that, that Ferris wheel, because uh, they didn't get everyone off of it quick enough. And, I, <laughs> and I'll tell you, some people on that sky wheel got some awesome video, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I, I would have definitely skirmished my way down that son of a gun. You know what? We, we have these things that we all live with. You live in the Northeast, you have the Nor'easters. You, you know, and now flooding, too. We can add that to the mix. But... Uh, you live out west, you get you get what you get out there. You get the freaking earthquakes. Midwest, you get your tornadoes. Go to New Orleans, you got your hurricanes. Everybody's got something. But it's true. Everybody gets has their own little thing. It's true, Tim. We do not have to deal with sandstorms. And it's very true. Thank God for that. Well, Some of those are scary them. too, man. If you've ever seen video of a sandstorm, that. I don't know if anyone ever has actually been in one. There's a any, famous any of our one out listeners there. Ever yeah, not me, but I mean, I've seen them out in Phoenix. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They get them. They do sure they? do. Oh, yeah. It turns uh, night, uh, day to night, man. That's scary. Yeah, a wall yeah, of sand will come in a few like miles. The big high. one coming into Vegas, or I think in Vegas or Utah or something. But it's like it looks like a great big giant like tidal wave of sand like coming at you, and you're like, wow, that's like some pretty. Freaking scary stuff. What the hell do you go? Uh, screw that, man. Uh, that I've never been to a desert in my life. I've flown over them, and uh, you can keep the desert. I got no no need for that. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I've I've got pretty much translucent skin. Um, so if I stand out in the sun for like ten seconds, I'm beat red. Joe can uh, Joe can attest to that. I don't even think you have to make it into direct sunlight. <laughs> I run in the summertime. I run from air conditioning to air conditioning, and uh, I'm actually getting a remote start in my car this year. I'm I, I'm I'm a big wimp when it comes to air conditioning. I guess I'm just I'm, <laughs> that's me, man. That's the American way, Tim. <laughs> Tim, I'm really shocked to hear you haven't been to a desert. No, I've never been to a desert. Wow, I love the desert. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. Um, it happened because. I just fly over them. Right, I right. Go to beautiful places. So you don't jump out of the plane over the forest. I mean, over the desert. No, no. Yeah. No, I've only gone skydiving up here. At uh, I, I went to the Blue Sky Ranch up in Gardner, New York. That place is great. 
that was quite an experience. Tim, you you mentioned uh, cliff diving earlier, and I and I really want to bring back. I'm sorry to to go go back to it, but I'll tell you, it's been so hot down here, and um, the pool is probably 85 degrees as well, so it really doesn't cool you down. And I was thinking how bad I would love to go find some cliffs and jump off some cliffs into some nice water, but. I can't find any soil here over six feet above. I was going to say, you don't have any hills. <laughs> no, <laughs> jump off a sand dune into a puddle or something. We have, we have some pretty interesting spots around here. Um, do you, Joe, do you remember um, Pine Island? Of course. That's what, exactly where I was thinking. It, it's one of the two places I was thinking about. And if I'm, if I'm up there this summer, I'm going. No, you don't want to go in there anymore. Oh, wow. It's nasty. Um, well, the last time I went for our listeners, Pine Island is in the middle of, it's a small little farm town and they farm onions around. There's, there's no like body of water there with the exception of one little foothill that they, it was an old abandoned iron mine and, uh, they drilled down and they hit a natural spring, which then filled up. And so we have these nice, uh, it's like 50, 50 foot cliff, I think it's the top, something like that, but it's, yeah, it's nice. Um. That water stagnant, Joe. Well, it was it was stagnant then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. But uh, the last time I went there, I found uh, little creepy crawlies All right. roaming around in my skin, and I think it was mosquito larvae. It was disgusting. Oh, I, great. I had bite, bites all over me. It was gross. All right. Well, I could scratch that off. That's cool. Yeah, you don't want to go there. No worries. I could take you it come to down to the New Jersey Shore, where the water's like fifty degrees. <laughs> <laughs> you, the water, you, your water turns uh, a nice moderate temperature in the second half of summer. Yeah, I mean we're lucky if we get it up to seventy-two most of the time. And the, the Jersey, the Jersey. I didn't even realize that water is so freaking cold. I mean, I mean you 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 go in, you have to like numb yourself up at slow paces. I mean it's that cold. I know our we're, we're we might be near we might be near eighty right now for the ocean temperature. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it and it sticks around eighty. It'd probably get up near eighty-five or so, but it stays into the eighties right right till October. It's not I bad. I ever remember Jersey water ever being eighty. Oh man, it's yeah. the coldest water. I mean, you got California, you can jump in. It's all good. You know, you, you acclimate pretty quick. Jersey, man. I mean, it's just like you're numb. You know, it's, it's right. that cold. Right. It's been a while since I've done the Jersey Shore. It's been a, it's been a long time. Yeah, 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 I've been there in a while either. You haven't missed anything. I don't go swimming when I. Well, go I missed. I missed the the pier going down into the ocean. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> that that, that was extraordinary, man. You know, I really didn't even think. I didn't even consider that the actual Jersey boardwalk would would collapse. You know, that just never even crossed my mind. Well, here's just here's the whole thing about that. They rebuilt all that stuff, got it all ready to rock and roll, mm-hmm. and then one of the stands had a fire and it burnt down. You know. Build a fair chunk of it again, so That's they had true. to rebuild it all over again. Wow! Yeah. Sandy, Sandy came in and freaking destroyed it, and then uh, they got it all built up, and then the fire got it and burned it back down again. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing that there's still people that don't uh, that haven't gotten any any uh, uh, help. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people that are still hurting for aid over there, but uh, yeah, that's a shame, man. My heart goes out to those folks. Yeah. Uh, so, guys. We haven't really had a discussion lately. In the last six or eight weeks, we've been back-to-back with a lot of awesome guests. Most recently, uh, George Van Tassel, uh, the story of uh, Giant Rock. Uh, I know that both of you remember. And uh, Well, we didn't have George on. No, of course we didn't have George on. We had his nephew on. That would have been an amazing show. Right. I, I mean, I'm trying. <laughs> right? <You know? laughs> I'm trying. Uh, but, you know, there was good feedback from the show. Uh, obviously, it's, it's an interesting story for uh, people in the UFO communities and uh, people who are just getting interest of. And uh, there's, there was a lot of things that came out of it that I was unfamiliar with. It's uh, it, it comes from a time before my time, but the only the the big one, you know, uh, Roswell, uh, that incident and the the UFO over Los Angeles, you know, things like that. Uh, so I really wasn't all that familiar with Giant Rock to the sense that I didn't know that George Van Tassel was 
um, I don't want to say summoning. I don't know if he would have, but he was he he more or less manufactured a device that uh, the claims were he would communicate with uh, this craft or crafts plural or people things on the crafts in order to uh, to just get messages or communication or uh, ideas and and uh, I really don't even know where I stand on it because uh, Dave, as you know, we, we talked about it. It's so difficult when it comes to summoning or uh, someone who's just getting what they would claim uh, direct messages. And, and it, it's, it's very difficult to approach the topic because there's no way to justify anything and there's no way to confirm or, or yeah, to disprove. I mean I know the Van Tassel story probably better than every one of our listeners. But unfortunately, I didn't realize that pretty much all of it had been channeled. I mean, there's little bits where you think, you know, like I said, I had I have a friend who stayed in the Tegatron now. Supposed to be the Tegatron, the wiring s- schematic is supposed to be, you know, sent to them or channeled to them. And uh, then they wire it up and it all works hunky-dory. But uh, I didn't realize all the information was channeled. And most of the researchers, like myself, and a lot of the old school guys, we don't really place a lot of, a lot of weight on the channeling. One, because it, it's you don't know where you're getting the information. Two is, it generally, and by generally I mean always, proves to be unreliable. So you just kind of keep your eye on that type of stuff. Now, on the on the paranormal end of that, is. If you start these little summoning ceremonies and, you know, Ouija boardy type things, you can bring stuff in. It generally isn't benevolent, but uh, we had a, it's interesting because we had a woman at our last meeting and she was doing this. It was, it was absurd is what it was, but she said she had talked to Valiant Thor and Valiant Thor is supposed to be this space being from Venus who came down here to give us all kinds of information. And there's a movie coming out about him. It's called a stranger at the white house. And, uh, she describes him as the most beautiful being she's ever seen, which if you're a biblical guy, it dings the, the description of Lucifer. He was the most beautiful being ever created. And this woman was like really expressive on that, like to the point where like she was fawning, like she, you know. So when you start getting into those realms, again, you don't know where you're getting the information from. And the thing that she was actually pitching uh, was complete BS. I mean, there was no real science to back it up i mean it was mumbo jumbo but they had a story they're getting a ten thousand ten million you know they turned down ten million dollars for the government because this is a free energy device blah 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 blah. but the device turns out to be like a glass ball with a little bit of hydrogen and water in it and that whole time with van tassel and all that stuff when like all the mysticism type stuff started rolling into that i mean it was just you had people preying on people with these devices that did this or did that or did the other so you know it, people are hip to it now because we could we can look at it and in back sight and see how ridiculous it was but at the time everybody was buying it you know buying into whatever the whatever the scam was so snake yeah. oil yeah snake uh, oil. the snake oil charmers yeah. Do they see aliens? We don't know. They they seem to be seeing something. My money and my the good money's on it. Ain't it wasn't aliens, you know? Right on. Well, you know, then here we are back with George Van Tassel because I had uh, we during the broadcast we had mentioned how we would really like to hear that uh, these tapes of him communicating, uh, in which the movie and the whole idea for the film uh, originated. And uh, I certainly have never heard them before. And uh, I did get a clip of that uh, that I was hoping to play here. And we'll get to it in just just a couple of minutes. Uh, but, it, you know, there was other things I, I had learned when I had got uh, this audio was sent to me was I had no idea that uh, uh, Giant Rock, uh, George Van Tassel and the airport that was constructed there, that was all they had leased all that land from the military. 
and we're operating this airport well, un- under lease from the military. So, I mean, it's, it's I'm sorry. Didn't our guest say it was the BLM? He did say it was the BLM. Yeah, he did. And they were under a federal uh, military lease for uh, the operations of the air base. Airfield, excuse me, airfield. And uh, I thought that was rather interesting uh, that uh, this property was being leased uh, under government or military and and to have all of this going on, you know, it's um, it obviously well, find that you actually fixture. find that as as one of those elements, uh, Joe, that actually pops up, especially in some of the paranormal stuff, um, the like really active paranormal stuff, the UFO stuff, we get it. Uh, I mean, even our la- our our guest from last week, um, MRU was like a, <clears throat> a a psychic, you know, one of those type of labs that were working on that type of stuff. But one of the questions that I got posed to later on was, and these were by, by you know people that worked within that community that I know, and they wanted to know, uh, uh, did they take uh, government contracts? Because that's one of those little red flags, one of those little those little loose piece of strings we pull at because we, for some reason, we always see, see that there's some sort of backer and a backer tends to be people like the government. And then you run into situations like, you know, back in the sixties, they were working a lot of the mind control type stuff. And, and there's books out from that era and, and, you know, they're, they're working on the kids in the colleges. They're taking some of these kids to come to counseling and whatnot. And they're using these techniques on these kids and, uh, you get guys like Bill Cooper who were saying, you know, this stuff is going on. And when, you know, they want chaos, they just light one of these, you know, they just turn one of these people that they programmed on and they'll go running through the schoolyard shooting everybody type of stuff, you know? So, you know, uh, the Patriot in me really wants to believe that's true. That uh, a lot of these school shootings and all this kind of stuff is uh, some kind of, conspiracy or whatever but the skeptic in me says that's well you know a what big there's just a lot of guns. Guns. there's a lot of crazy it's funny, I'm a hardcore ass. skeptic I'm a hardcore skeptic and that all looks planned to me yeah it does but I'm just saying the uh, uh I hope not but I mean it's just, but it's a hell of it's it's, it's a good way ugly. to push the banning of guns I could tell you that yeah, it's just it's such an ugly. You get idea. these you get these quote unquote crisis actors that seem to be showing up at each one of these little yeah. events. And they're you know, they're the yeah, ones. Yeah, there was that. You know what? And even I think even Dr. Miller mentioned it. There was uh, that photo on two different news networks where uh, one woman they used one woman's photo as uh, she was a, a victim of one event. Uh, oh, I think it was the shooting in uh, Colorado, and then the, she was also. Uh, a, a victim at Sandy Hook, or one I, yeah. I, one of the two local shootings. I don't know. It was it was all over the net, but um, there are a lot of dots that are being connected by people, and you don't know. I don't, and it it, it does. Well, you could certain, yeah, you could find a correlation in, in anything if you if you want to really take it to the nth degree. But it, there's there's just a little too much totalitarianism seems to be going on in our country right now and right. everybody and everybody and it seems like everybody it doesn't really ma- you know it doesn't really go around party lines everybody's like what's going on here you know because oh, you're into- right the party yeah. line is is an illusion unfortunately at this point that's it, Every, it really yeah, is, everybody it's sees the really militarization class. of our police forces at this point in the game i mean yep. why do we need armored carriers for little towns in the middle of nowhere you know what's going on here yeah and, and drones yeah, why does the Uf- USDA need submachine guns? Was the, like, the poultry like really attacking them when they go to inspect <laughs> them or what? All I know is it, in order for, in my opinion, to have guns here, I just want the same guns the uh, my police force has. That's all. But the yeah, problem that was the original, is that was the original intent, Joe. Submachine guns are because, intended for either trenches or urban warfare. Right. I That's understand, it, you know, if you're a larger force, and you have a sniper or something like that, you know, who's sure. you specifically trained. Because I don't want to hear you're training a large, a large majority of police officers to be snipers. That would scare the hell out of me. Because I know a few people that have become cops, and that scares the hell out of me, just that alone. Yeah, and I know exactly, Joe. And I know some cops that there's no way they should be on any kind of police forces. You got yeah. that right. 
So <laughs> I mean, I mean we a, have that, I'm not speaking that for all of them. Going on. You know what? I, th- there's two sides to that because I, I I do know some pretty good cops and I know true. some pretty nasty cops. I know some good ones. I've been treated very nicely by some. I've been treated really bad by others. <laughs> really, really, really bad. <laughs> Can't say I didn't have some of it coming because I do get kind of nasty. But uh, hey. I don't think so, Tim. I don't think you had it coming. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, but Tim's right. I mean, there's good cops and bad cops. This is a, it's, I, the real reality of it is, is someone had one of those things up and says, uh, "Cain killed Abel with a stone." It's not a gun problem. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a soul problem or something to that effect. And that's, you know, the society is kind of getting sicker. Nobody's doing their job with parenting people. We used to bring gu- our guns into school and, mm-hmm. and for show and tell. And we used to have like rifle competitions between schools and stuff like that. It's not the, it's not the firearms. It's just society is starting to turn. And this is, you know, we're seeing this and let's face it. If there's a bigger agenda at play, I was showing somebody, you know, a thing from beware of the pale horse from Bill Cooper. Oh, and he yeah. states in that, and that was like, what, 89 or something like that? That's He's stating there that, you know, they're going to they're gonna be releasing, you know, these people into the into shoot up schoolyards. I mean, he's calling all the present day stuff that we see going on. And the end game is to get our guns away from us. We heard we had the president saying that, you know, he's going to make executive order on the on the Second Amendment. Well, I'm sorry, everybody, but but. He took an oath to defend the Constitution. And part of that Constitution is that Second Amendment. So if he does anything about it, he should be on impe- uh, impeached on the fact that he's not he's not living up to his oath. And his oath says you don't f with that Second Amendment, and we mean it. The argument that you're getting from both sides, one argument is, in my opinion, warped and does hide a an agenda. And the other side of the argument is, you know what, we are the people, and when a tyrannical government takes control of the country, how do you keep it in check? Especially with, in the event that uh, we're supposed to have, you know what, I, I, I totally understand fully automatic weapons. I get why, and I understand the, un, the, the reasoning behind why these people, why anyone would want them banned. Fine, sure, whatever. But when a criminal has an automatic weapon, and you have a police force that doesn't respond for 11 minutes, how do you protect your family? I agree. That, and that, that, is, that is the number one argument that should be spat out every single time. If you ever read, um, there's Rifleman Magazine. The NRA puts out a couple, couple sure. magazines. Um, yeah, they put out a lot always, of stuff. <laughs> There's always a section where they show um, like five to ten stories that are recent stories that you just don't see in the mainstream media of people protecting themselves with guns, whether they had to fire or not. They put ones where somebody just cocks their shotgun and, right. and uh, the, the evil doers run away. But, you know, that's the way it is, man. Well, the, the, if these no, stories I was having happen all the time. About this, if you add up, and the, and the NRA magazine article exactly was what I was going off of, and that's a small sampling, Tim, you know, for, for the submissions they get they have put in. But if you if you add up all the numbers of people who are saved because of guns, it dwarfs everybody else who's being killed by guns. And there's a reason for that. It's because people, the people who are prepped, the whole family that was supposed to get killed didn't get killed. The one guy who came in to kill them all got killed. So Well, if I could say something on behalf of the school shootings, and I'm not speaking for them, but just from my own point, is Tim will vouch. In high school, I went to New York Military Academy, which was the high school right down the road from uh, West Point. And my first day at New York Military Academy, they gave me a gun. And this is your gun. And uh, I had to... We, every student, not just myself, we had to take uh, a rifleman class, like a, a target practice class, and you have to pass that class just like gym class or health class. You, you had to, and you had a personal gun, and you had to go fire your gun every single day. And there was I, – I never did this, but I can assure you I could have walked out of the shooting range with plenty of bullets. It was, that was no problem at all. No one was checking you to make sure you fired all the shots you had gone in there to practice on. Well, you know what, Joe? You're you're right. You're right. There was no shootings there, and I can tell you, being a a school that uh, children uh, lived at, 
It was a boarding school. There are serious issues there. And from 8 p.m. till 6 a.m. in the morning, all of these barracks or dorms, as if you want to call them, there was no adults in those buildings. It was just run by other students. Like you're, you're right. The kid who sits next to you in English class <laughs> after school, he might be your lieutenant. He might have a higher rank than you. And but, they, most of the kids that went there were placed there because their parents were sick and tired of their, their bullcrap. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all trouble kids. They were well, all you're, trouble. you're speaking generally, right? Right. Definitely. definitely. Now we get to the crux of the, the, the discussion. <laughs> but the po point being is there was a lot of kids there who had uh, issues. Uh, a lot of frustrations uh, is probably a better word than issues. And there was a lot of, a lot of fights and a lot of uh, things you could not run away from being a closed campus and I can assure you not once did I ever hear someone uh, to intending to use their gun you, you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. uh, that was it was always uh, you know fight stories and things like that or what was going to happen but there was never a worry or a concern of that um, and, and this wasn't even people bringing guns to school they were just there you know so uh, I don't know when this all changed, but it, uh, everything started with these schools with Columbine. I think I was already out of school when that happened. But Hell, even when the father of the Colum Columbine kids came out and basically re rebuked Obama, threatening to, to, to you know, uh, to executive order the, the Second Amendment this week. He came out and said, well, whose side are you on? He goes, you know. I'm a father of the guy at Columbine. That, that does mean I want you to, to repeal the the, our, the law of the land. You know, you have no right. Right. Well, I mean, you know what it is. It's it's exploit, exploit, exploit. That's that's all they're doing. They're just they they see an opportunity to push their agenda and they exploit the emotions of the masses. That's what they do. And it's not only gun control that they do this for. They do it for hey, our liberty, our, our brothers of liberty over in Australia are having a hard time with their their government trying to go after their guns and sure. and yeah. uh, squawking down on them. I mean, the reality of it is, you know, a, a populace that's unarmed are subjects, and a populace that are armed are citizens. I mean, we're, we're, we haven't been thrown overthrown any tyrants, but Lord knows it's probably overdue. But you know, we haven't, uh, you know. Thomas Jefferson said, you know, the, the, the only problem with the Second Amendment is when they come to take your guns, then they're going right. to have the Second Amendment is going to be a, you know, it's going to be a problem. Well, look, I, I live in New York State and Cuomo pushed the Safe Act, the Safe Act, and effective, I think it was April 15th. It doesn't sound that safe at all. You know, I'm unfamiliar with it. Right. Well, I'll tell right, you well, this it's much. Uncut. It's un I, no matter how they voted, it's unconstitutional. It's right. part of the Second Amendment. They can't outvote the Second Amendment without having a constitutional that's right. Uh, well, Congress. Listen to this, and listen to this so little. they've already negated their jobs. And if the people were really on their game, they'd be marching down there right now and snatching these people out of their seats and putting them in the freaking local jail because they're violating their oath of the Constitution. They what can't. Cuomo state facts, did, damn. Yeah. What What Cuomo did is he. Now this is the sneaky part of, of politics and how, how you how you push your agendas. Just like the mainstream media and how Obama uses them to get his message across and, and and work through scandals and whatnot, Cuomo just followed a playbook, basically. In whenever there's legislation pushed through, especially something like this, you know, the public bases the outcome of the legislation, how well it works, by the numbers and by well, in this case, registration of all semi-automatic rifles that have A, B, C, or D um, uh, amenities, a, a pistol grip or a, a magazine or telescopic um, stock. If it has two of any of these features, then the gun is considered illegal and it needs to be registered in New York State. So he gives this date that it has to be done by. But what he did in turn is he also made it impossible for those numbers to, of who actually followed the law and who did register those weapons. He made it illegal for those numbers to not be let out so that the public would not know that it was a failed law. I heard from an undisclosed source, and I'll be honest with you, this was, this was someone who I spoke to who happens to know somebody, and I don't know how true this is, so I hold no merit behind the statement, but I heard it was less than 13%, which is a very low number. 
and that's a hell of a lot lower than um, uh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire was something like 30 percent of the of the actual owners that they know of that owned semi-automatic weapons that actually registered. So these are two failed policies. And now Obama's trying to double down on this. Well, yeah, and, well, and, and but there's a there's a big I think there's a bigger agenda at play here. I mean, I don't United think it, Nations. Takes, it doesn't take a sighted individual really to see it. Mm-mm. But the fact of the matter is, is that when this type of craziness breaks out, just like they did down at the, the ranch in Nevada, you know, as many Americans as possible have to show up and stand, you know, stand the government down. If they know that the people are going to are going to, you know, back up their their talk then either they have to play their hand or they have to back down. If they play their hand, then we have a rogue government and we can go after them. If they back down, then we keep them in line. You know? Well, I will give up my weapons when we stop giving uh, terrorist weapons. <laughs> I can tell you that. Because yeah, as they long can, as they, they we give, give them weapons, get I'm armed. Or the Mexican drug cartels. One of them? Well, I said, no, well, Fast oh. and Furious, that scandal, we, we armed those freaking cartels. Oh, absolutely. Cartels. I mean, and, and look, one of, one of our uh, patrol officers is uh, murdered with one of those guns. You know, I mean, and obviously and that forget, wasn't guys, the plan. But the Obama the, administration the, is flooding the southern border now with children from Mexico. Yep. And they're coming in at such a rate that it's freaking pandemonium down there. The, the Texas and the Arizona governments are in over their heads because literally – children with every kind of disease and they're trying to put them in these little penned up areas supposedly the administration has got uh i don't know how many millions set aside for lawyers for each of these kids so that they can get into this this country i mean there's a lot going on out there. there's a lot of governmental anarchy right now that should be be putting a stop to i mean there's everybody they're, everybody they're sees putting it a lot of these people. children on a um a military base in oklahoma a, a building oh, yes, in Oklahoma that. that's not being used currently at the moment. They're shuttling them in there, but I mean, they're they're living there. They're basically confined to these buildings for school or living, whatever you want to call them. But I, I'm sure it's not the healthiest of places. It, it, well, yeah, it, there's there's actually that, I'm, I'm just not the, buying that. Um, hey, when they came into America, they had to go through Ellis Island, and that was if you know if you were sick or had mumps or measles, you know you were segregated from the population. And they've got pictures coming out of there where. They've got some very sick children down there, and you know, we're going to end up paying the tab because the administration won't protect the damn southern border. <laughs> well, here, here, well put. Yeah, well put. And I'll tell you, buddy, my constitution. I have, you know, I have a copy of it, and it's hanging on the wall in my office. And um, I know those rules pretty good, those laws, and it's supposed to be a very difficult, insanely losing process in order to change those but uh right now they're they're just changing them at will and dave you're right no oh, one's doing, really no cool. one's going to think about it well cool thing about the carolinas joe is that south carolina just voted to include the constitution being taught in the school curriculum which is not anymore that would that 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 document should be the most keyed on a piece of learning that we give our children, but we don't. What we don't. What we give the children nowadays is that you know America is like a horrible nation. You know we're this, we're that, we're you know, and it's you know like the kids are being indoctrinated with this core curriculum stuff like crazy. And parents, I have friends who are pulling their kids out of school because they do not want them to be indoctrinated with our you know dear leader, wonderful Obama, you know nonsense. Yeah, that 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 argument drives me crazy because I'm so against the core, Common Core. Um, a family member of mine is a school teacher, and she went to she went through the state university um, uni- law school system, and she was indoctrinated to the dark side. And uh, I I I try really hard to not have arguments with her, but she and she's an intelligent person, which drives me nuts because she's so smart and book smart, and well, maybe not so much street smart. But <laughs> I love her to death. She is street smart. I take that back. She's street smart. But, uh, you know, I just, I just feel like the... No, she's not. No, she is. <laughs> I, 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 feel, I feel like um, it's a shame that, uh, that you know, they, they're being indoctrinated, just like you said. All these yeah, kids I can that are going through the with, system... I can guarantee with a 100% effectiveness that you give me a child and you let me give 
teach that child my way and you give the child the common core uh, uh them a common core teacher and have them teach it their way i can guarantee you my child will dust the other child and it won't even have to think about it that's how retarded it is it's just like this new math they're trying to teach i mean have it's, you seen the math solving stuff joe it's like I, yeah. the bizarro world yeah it's i don't understand the the thought process to initiate this because it is a very lengthy process where uh in basic math there's there's many different ways to double and triple check your work you know in a fairly sensible time you you could double check and triple check and everything works out but it's such a long process that in order to double check it, you really need a whole other equation and it just doesn't make sense at all it's it puts you down to where you have to use a pen and paper you you no longer are able to to calculate or or put numbers into a reasonable sequence so it it doesn't fly with me at all and uh and that's you know from i'm i'm pretty good with teaching my kids math and i'm very proud to say that uh, my oldest daughter uh this year they were giving us uh they were giving us a little bit of a hassle in regards to uh i'll tell you this right now they wanted to uh, they felt my child needed um add medication um adderall they wanted to give my child adderall and i said wow like she must be one of the bright ones joe that's coke man you know like like that's some wild stuff you uh, actually I'm, i think it's more like meth right it said you know like um, meth. my child is 10 you know it's like uh, she's got a few years to go to college time you know that's those are her decisions not mine uh but then after bouncing back and forth with them they were they were really adamant and wanted us to see a different doctor and we did and the doctor uh was with us said this child in no way shape or form needs medication uh, learning uh her vocabulary is fantastic and her math is great and then um uh, then I find out that I don't know if it's in a lot of states, but certainly here in my state, uh, our school districts get a thousand dollars extra for each child on the medication. And so, I, yeah, I said, well, this ain't happening. There's not a chance. And, well, see, uh, and I, I fought a tooth and nail. And those I, are, that's another common thread, Joe, with all of these uh, school killings and theater killings. Every one of those kids were on some sort of antidepressant psychotic medication. So uh, one well, of the correlations we have been able to pull out of all these school shootings is the guys shooting it are on the stuff they're trying to stick your daughter on. Yeah. Well, man, I'll tell you because two things uh, came out of it was there was a a lower strength medication, but basically the same. And and I had given it uh, to my daughter without her knowing. And uh, I wanted to monitor her and it was it was not a school day or anything like that. And and uh because there was just so much pressure against me and i then i i second guessed myself and i said you know am i being ignored it being a good dad i wanted to take a good look at it and the first day she she was on it i went into the living room and she was sitting there on the couch which is usually uh, looking into things reading books very curious about things she's just sitting there and it, it looks like she's about to start crying and i said hey what, what's wrong and she said Dad, I can't think of anything. All these nice things I like to think about, I can't think of any of them. She said, I'm just sitting here and I can't think of anything. And I said, well, that's it. You know, there's uh, this, wow. is not, this is not happening anymore. <clears throat> and so I took her, I, took, I, I didn't, no longer gave it to her. And then I held my ground with the school and I went there and uh, I showed my ass to him. And, <laughs> uh, and needless to say, my kid finished the year with every single award the school gives out with no medication so they could say whatever Joe, they want I rub but... it in their face so hard i i would have went up on the stage and with all those little ribbons and say and they wanted to stick my daughter on exactly adderall exactly you know? she even won the presidential it. award man you know i was saying like and you wanted me to to dumb her down you know to where she can't think of all these things that made her win these awards you know now look I, I i have i have a couple opinions about these meds some meds some children definitely do need meds well, sure, I, sure. I, I i will totally say that but yes i do believe that there is a big business issue here um i believe that uh, some people some doctors are obviously 
they're uh, led to prescribe certain medications for whatever reason, and most of it is monetarily. Now, what the problem is here is with Obamacare, and I'm going right back to the gun control sure. issue. Obamacare <laughs> gives the government the right to look at anyone's medical records, medical history going back wherever. So with that, I've, uh, I've heard this said before, but I have to say it because we're, we were talking about it, and it's always on my mind every once in a while. I hear some, this or that, and I, you know, we get these shootings. Oh, the question always comes out. What was he on? Blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? They're going to use, when it comes down to it, when they do try to do some kind of confiscation, they're going to use, oh, well, you were on uh, whatever, uh, Wellbutrin. Why were you on a Wellbutrin? You're mentally unstable. Therefore, you sounds cannot. like a hell of a plan to me because right. they get enough people of the population on it, they can deny the population the right, right to it. Yeah. Right now, you know exactly what I'm saying. So they're pushing these meds on people so that a large portion of the uh, and, and let's face it, I would say it's probably up to thirty to forty percent of the people have at one time been on one of these medicines. So therefore, uh, I think there's the break. Yeah, I'm pulling the plug on you, buddy. Right on. Hey, we didn't get to play that clip yet, but as soon as we come back, we're going to get to that clip. And uh, also, there's a little story about a 9,000-year-old skeleton from the UK I also wanted to touch on. Oh, we'll be yeah. back in just a few minutes, folks. Just hang in there. We'll be right back. Hello, I am your host, Joe Kiernan. Welcome back to Researchers Radio Live. I cannot be any happier to be here. Myself, I'm... I'm uh, Certainly expecting the same from uh, Tim and Dave. It's been a fantastic show so far. Uh, we haven't had a chance to discuss much in the last few weeks, so it's really nice uh, being able to uh, throw a few topics around. Uh, before we get back into it, guys, I just want to remind everyone that we are the world's largest listener-supported internet radio-based station, and uh, we would like to continue on this road and continue to raise the bar and raise the platform in which we uh, perform these topics and shows. Uh, we got a lot of different shows going on. Last time I checked, I think we were pushing about 80 different shows between two studios running concurrently 24 hours a day. If you can make your way to freedomslips.com, uh, I always recommend uh, everyone getting into the chat room where you can interact with guests, hosts, uh, and get yourself involved in plenty of interesting conversations. Uh, please also find the donate button. And uh, large donations are very helpful. I understand uh, that's a lot to ask at times. However, if you find a show you like, uh, what I always like to suggest is anytime you listen to a program you enjoy, uh, dro drop a dollar in the hat. Drop two bucks, three bucks, whatever it is. It really goes a long way. If everyone did that, uh, we would be fine, and we would be uh, pushing mainstream media right out of the way, kicking in the front door by now. Uh, without further ado, Tim, Dave. Yes, sir. Before we get into uh, this clip uh, that um, I really can't wait to listen to, because to be honest with you, I have not listened to the whole thing myself. I wanted to, uh, to save it for, for here. Uh, however, a few weeks ago, I mentioned... Uh, a story in relation to a, uh, a very old skeleton that was found in the UK. And I wanted to really get into it then, but I couldn't recall all the details on it. So I had returned to the story and, and I wanted to share it. And I don't know if the two of you uh, remember the story, but here's how it went. Uh, and, and I always find it so, so cool and interesting how things pan out. Uh, in the UK, uh, there's Somerset Village. Uh, it has a town, and I, Surrey Sunflower in the chat room. Uh, hopefully, she'll correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there's a town uh, known as Cheddar, and uh, not just known for its cheese, uh, but it's also known for this skeleton guy, uh, known as Cheddar Man, of course. Cheddar Man. <laughs> <laughs> Now the deal. The deal here. It's uh, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. Uh, they found this cheddar man in a grave inside a cave uh, uh, within a gorge, 
and um, they tested the body and uh, they were able to retrieve DNA from it and it's uh, just about 9,000 years old, the skeleton. And a uh, history teacher at the local school, he was, he was pretty uh, blown away about it. He thought it was uh, amazing that it was right there in his town. And, uh, and he wanted to interact a little bit with it and get the, his class involved. And uh, being that he only lived a half a mile away, what was pretty cool was this teacher said he'd actually even been inside those caves several times. So um, what he did was, uh, after uh, meeting up with the, the testing authorities and, uh, and teachers, excuse me, and parents and the students, what they did was they, they took DNA swabs. Uh, he encouraged his students to give DNA and they wanted to test all the classmates to see that if after 9,000 years, if any of the classmates uh, could possibly be of some relation to this 9,000 year old skeleton. And it, you know, it's quite questionable if that was even possible because they knew, you know, six, 7,000 years ago is really when a, a large, larger group of humans came into the British Isles. So the 9,000 year old hunter gatherers, not too likely that uh, the DNA would have lasted. And so after they tested uh, all the children and uh, the teacher as well, they submitted it all and the results came back and there was a match and not just uh, a, a relative match. They got a match that someone was a direct descendant after 9,000 years. Oh. And uh, it turned out to be the teacher. It was the really? teacher who had been going to those caves and lived just a half a mile from those caves. So after 9,000 years, this guy's family really didn't go too far. Pretty cool, <laughs> man. Pretty cool. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a great story to tell his students. I think, I think that's awesome. <laughs> I really do. I don't think Joe was going in that direction. Like, it was a good setup, though, just to say. I can no, that, totally work that, I mean, that that is uh, that is an incredible an incredible story because um things I like that just pretty don't cool happen. man things like right. that just you just don't see that that's pretty cool right i'm just uh, honestly i'm just shocked there's um that connection after 9000 years because again it's it's 9000 years ago it's really hunter gatherer you know it's 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 still a yeah. structure. Yeah, you know, Joe. There's there's a lot of things about that I'd like to look into. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, because that's it's a yeah. cheddar, cheddar man. Yeah. I mean, nine thousand year old, and you have a direct descendant. I mean, nine thousand years, three hundred generations. It said. Look him up, cheddar man. <laughs> Ch cheddar man has the answers, dude. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we'll have to well, maybe we'll have to eyeball this one a little closer. I'll tell you what, Dave. If you believe that one, wait till you hear this audio I'm going to play. <laughs> because I'm, uh, you know, I, and I'm joking, and I really am, because I understand that uh, there could be uh, higher planes of consciousness for uh, understandings. Um, I, I, I do see and understand how it's possible. However, we have no way of approving this or showing it to another person. Uh, so, of course, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Giant Rock with George Van Tassel uh, because I was very excited to get this audio. Uh, I wish I had it for the show, but in a way, I'm glad we didn't because uh, it was really cool talking to Mr. Meeks for the whole time. Uh, he was a, an awesome guy, and, uh, I, and I'm looking forward to his movie and his project. I mean, it sounds fantastic, and I'm sure it'll be very entertaining. Yep. Uh, but I really wanted to hear his uncle's uh, audio tapes on how he, uh, I, I guess, summon, summoning or communicating with, is is that the proper terminology? I guess he would be communicating with them? I just say, I just say channeling. That's what they're doing. They're channeling? Is that is that the proper term? They're channeling. You know, they're it's not emailing them. I do not believe there was any emailing. I do not believe so. 
but I can't, I cannot confirm this, nor deny. <laughs> so there's a whole space time continuing thing. I, well, I don't want to break that down today. You know, I, <laughs> I, I understand that uh, that could be quite terrible, but I think we're all safe. I, I think we are. But I'll tell you, man. I took a good look at that giant rock, and it's giant. Well, it's yeah, a good it, word for it. It's it is a big rock, and uh, I I have no idea how that thing got in the desert like that because it looks kind of well rounded, like like a like I would expect to see from a, a glacial deposit or something like that. I don't, was it in the desert? I thought it was on the coast it's or somewhere. Seabed. Yeah, near the coast. Um, where's our fact check? I think we might both be right. I think. <laughs> Because there's plenty of sand near the beach. <laughs> but honestly, I, I think it was... People, we really know what we're doing. I, I, no, I really think it was uh, a desert region along the coast. But uh, hey, man, California's got a whole bunch of deserts. Yes. I mean, Joshua Tree is out there. but I intentionally went to Joshua Tree to get lost, so I can't tell you where it was. Uh, so... If I could just move on from Cheddar Man, what yeah, I have... if we have to go by if we have to go by Mr. Meeks's you know description, the stuff I know. I mean, you had to drive out there. I mean, it was out there. So I mean, yeah, I know it wasn't it was... particularly hospitable as I as I recall, but right. you know, some hard living out there for sure. But I, you know, also uh, late forties, nineteen fifties, California was was kind of remote. It was it was fairly remote at that time. Yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, so. I'm going to play a clip of this, guys, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good discussion about it afterwards. Fired Are you gentlemen up. ready for it? Ready. You, Fired up. Do you have popcorn, everyone? <laughs> no? Here we go, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello, Marlon Toy. I was... Uh, startled to hear your call to rest. I recognize it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just a second. Hello, Payne. Oh, yeah, you picked that up. Well, that's just fine. Uh, yeah, do you want to wait on that a moment? Okay, uh, Payne, uh, no, the visual's opening up. Uh, uh, yeah, will you bring it over a little? Uh, the left uh, side seems to be kind of vague. No, that still hasn't got it. My uh, left uh, leg is getting uh, hot. Yeah, now the visual's clear. Yeah, can you bring that temperature down? I can notice that, yeah. No, you're centered now. No, very good. Yeah, now you're coming in. I can see you. You're loud enough. Very clear. Uh, yeah, Marlon Perry uh, was calling there. Uh, uh, do you want to... Uh, Make that contact through. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, wait a minute. No, I got. Uh, no, I got it. All right. Does that read all that pain? Okay, but I feel kind of funny. Oh, just a terrific tingling all over. More than usual. Uh, okay, I'm clear. Oh, wait a minute. Well, I got hung up on my body here somewhere. First time I ever got caught in myself. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm clear. From the station out there, and greetings to you there. I am Malachi. 
over a year of your time past, we inform you that the nuclear and atomic tests conducted on the surface of your planet would cause earthquakes upon the opposite side of the globe from the past. The recent Philippine and Chinese damages were direct results of repercussions from tests conducted in your western state. Violent shot throughout the Mediterranean and African areas will follow. Rebounds will bring about severe shock in your country following. Surface atmospheric changes will be apparent. I just, I just killed, killed that. that. I couldn't understand a word of it. It reminded me of this guy back in the 70s. He used to channel this, uh, this extraterrestrial uh, Voltron. <laughs> Voltron. And his eyes would roll back in his head and he'd be like, you know, signal coming in. <laughs> signal. And he just passed away recently. I forget his name. I should know his name. But he'd, he'd be like, gateway opening, signal transmission coming. Well, I couldn't understand. I really couldn't understand what, what he was saying right there. And it's not fair for me to play the, the entire clip. It's almost 25 <laughs> minutes long. <laughs> I might I have fallen asleep. I was wondering how long we're going to roll on that, Jeff. Oh, man. I was, I was waiting for something awesome, you know. Uh, but it, it's kind of incoherent. I understand it's an older audio tape, but it's, it's I'm kind sorry, of Joe, I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't paying attention to the text because uh, oh, it was silly. <laughs> good. It, you know, it, it, it did. It sounded like in the beginning he was having some kind of conversation on a phone. Like right. it sounded like he was talking to someone yeah, right. on the phone. And then it just went into him being, uh, you know, his chanting of some sort. And it, yeah, that was inaudible. I, I just don't understand um, why it couldn't have been recorded as a two way conversation. Uh, it. I guess well, the, you want to hear what you want to hear what they said. Well, naturally, you know, I mean, you do, but I mean, yeah. why are you recording it? You know, because he was channeling it. And apparently what you oh, you want him to talk like he's schizophrenic. Is that what you're trying to go for? <laughs> like you want to hear? I, I didn't even want to hear him. Give and take. Is that what you're looking well, for? Well, whatever. See, see <laughs> this, I, which is why I wish I had it prior uh, to the to the uh, the earlier show that we had, because. Right. I don't want to say anything negative. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, but, but we could have gotten an ex explanation from. We're right. Like, it, the best in, in the, you know, right. if he if he manufactures some sort of a device that would allow the communications to go both ways, and and I were to uh, be working with the top scientists of the nation and recording it, I, what happened to the suggestion of recording the other half of the conversation? Yeah. That, that's all. I that was the conversation. Unless we heard it in its entirety, yes. Yeah. But that's the thing. If you've ever watched any of the interviews he's done, because he was on several shows and and you know TV shows, radio shows, and he would talk about his his interactions. I don't, I don't know if you haven't. You you know they're available on YouTube. Some of them are pretty funny, but some of them are actually pretty compelling too. I mean, he brings up some points and he talks about some things that you hear. Up to this day, like you, you would, you know, the average person probably wouldn't know much about it. But anyone that has any kind of knowledge of, of uh, you know, ufology would probably say, well, yeah, that that sounds right on. That sounds right on. But then again, you hear about these tanned people. I don't know. It, it's it, it, it it's it's a different account. It just is. 
I understand. I understand. But uh, Tim, you made a good point that uh, Anne Hesh did an audio recording speaking to right. aliens once. Right. And right. <laughs> either way, hers was far more entertaining than what I <laughs> Hers was. Yeah. In fact, I would go as far as to say, I don't know if you've ever read uh, uh, like The Hobbit or uh, Lord of the Rings, but uh, J, what's his name? Uh, Tolkien. He invented that language for like the elven, and it was a pretty intricate the language. Elven. He actually invented an entire language so he could write the book. And she goes into that level. Like she, she actually sounds out these consonants and these crazy words. She, she's pretty – either she was extremely talented and extremely creative or she was authentic or she was just completely nuts. She's an actress. There you go. There's yeah. your answer. She could have been nuts. I'm pretty sure of it. Well, didn't she? they find her naked out in the bushes or some sort of stuff <laughs> going on? Haywire or something? I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. How did I forget about that? Uh, that's what I'm saying, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I there you have that. it, and there you have it, folks. And that's why I'm the Mac Daddy of Eastern ufology. <laughs> well, strange things happen out there, man. That stinks because I. Oh, I was no glad like about it. that. You know, it's I, funny. I I've like been reading. Like I've been rereading over some of these old D. Scott Rogo books, and D. Scott Rogo used to work with like Jerome Clark, and and uh, uh, a lot of the parapsychologists and ufologists respected him because he was tying a lot of the the you know, a lot of the dots together and asking all the hard questions. Nobody seems to be asking about these things, but he has one of these books. It's um, earth secret, uh, earth secrets and ha secret inhabitants, but he's got all these various cases. And it's like, you know, you got flying humanoids, you, you've got Bigfoot and you get these like really strange Bigfoot accounts or these creature accounts, but there's like, and it's, and it's all, you know, it's all mixed in together. But it's all this crazy stuff, and and like the whole town see it, so it's like not like you could actually dismiss it. But it kind of comes, and then everything gets quiet for years, and maybe it comes back, maybe it doesn't. But the stuff pops up all over the place, and basically they're like, you know, what what is this? There, there's something going on because every, a lot of people are seeing this stuff, and a lot of reliable people are seeing this stuff, but nobody ever seems to be able to get their hands around it, you know? Well, you know, when you mentioned earlier, Dave, that – uh, no one's actually, in in your opinion, filmed an actual flying saucer. What what is tossed around in the circles you go through in regards to how fifty years ago everything was a flying saucer in respect to it being a the common known shape of that time? You know, very metallic silver, aluminum colored. Uh, pretty you know pr pretty much a 50s design if if you if you follow me as opposed to now uh the ufos reported are uh whether it's bioluminescent or a uh, a a uh, shape-shifting craft you know things like that uh, well it's it's been a progression and we were everybody's kind of you know old school's like well what's the next manifestation because I, you know, if I give a talk or whatever, I say, you know, back in the 1600s or 1500s, they had something in Europe called the, the, uh, the hidden commonwealth. And it'd be like these, you know, fairies, gnomes, and stuff, whatever. But they'd snatch people out of the neighborhoods and they'd bring them to their little place and have them do their thing. But the, the, the caveat was you weren't supposed to eat their food, or else you wouldn't be able to escape and come back. Well, a lot of these people would end up coming back to their village and it'd be years later and there'd be a time differential and, and a lot of the same stuff you hear like from alien abduction type stuff. And then you get into the early 1800s before dirigibles were flying around and you get these, you know, two or three people and they land and they usually ask for water and, and a couple of people stand away from the, the dirigible and the guy asks all kind of weird questions and, and the guys usually seeing it are like engineers are like, I can't figure out how that damn thing would even fly. But, there was this weird technology and then you get into the 1900s and you get, you know, flying saucers and then flying saucers have seemed to kind of peter out. And now we're getting all these orbs like everywhere. I mean, I've been watching yours on your page, your page, Joe. And it's like, it's, you know, we don't really get flying saucers. We get the, the, some of these triangles. I, I personally, I think the triangles are terrestrial, but uh, these light balls that I've been filming like forever is 
pretty much what we've seen, you know, for a, quite a bit of time. So yeah. and, I, I, I agree. Uh, with you. I think I think that those uh, the triangles are are ours or somebody's that's from here. Definitely. I well, agree you, with that. You'll get some of the films where the the lights will light up and one will pop on, one will pop on, one will pop on, and it'll be in a triangular formation. And people are like, "Oh, this is a triangle craft." And it's like that's three single crafts in a triangular formation, you know. But I mean, you know, you know when it's a triangular craft because they usually have some sort of lighting and it's moving at it. You know, you can you, you can kind of pick that off pretty easy. You know, even Joe has uh, um. Well, more than one of these videos, but there's one in particular I'm thinking of where um, Joe and I, maybe you can remember this one, but th- there was one where you took a photo of, uh, it was it, it was just after dark, and wa- it was video actually, where the, the craft, and I couldn't tell if it was rectangular or not, but it, there was three or four different lights, and it went in and out of the trees, maybe 50 to 100 feet off the ground, and it hovered and moved slowly and made different turning do you know the one I'm talking about, Joe? I do. I mean, I, that one was very you know, compelling. I don't, I don't, I, I don't have any better suggestions. I mean, that's what blows my mind. And the, the reason I had uh, a video from last week was when that bad storm had rolled through that produced a few tornadoes. I had set up a camera to, because I I can't help myself. I I love those storms, and. Those lights that I captured on that video, that was only, it was not an hour after that storm went by. It was close to it, though, probably like 45 minutes after, in the same spot as the, the camera. I didn't uh, I didn't move the camera anywhere. So it's, it, it, I say that, whereas with really bad storms like that rolling through, and it wasn't just a single storm, there was a few more of them that came for uh, until the next morning. It would be really strange to be in that area uh just doing um flares or um uh, wait you know it's funny any, Joe, any is... craft uh, plane flights in that area like they redirect the planes at that point when there's so many storms coming in off the ocean sorry dave go ahead no that's an, that's, just, that's actually a very good point joe i mean they do but i don't think that's what i don't think that's what we're seeing over your place personally okay yeah because because you you if they're directing them in off the shore you see the light as it's coming in that's not what you're seeing at your place you're seeing stationary lights kind of pop up you know pop on that's right so that's, yeah yeah I mean um, and, and then they're not there you know you could uh, like that night there was a, a few of these orange lights that lit up in the sky and and then I looked around for 10 15 minutes more just looking around everywhere and there's nothing and uh, that's what I uh, was was telling my wife was saying that it's we don't even see planes you don't see you don't see anything like that because they just completely reroute everything when when there's storms coming in off the ocean and well, uh, and rightfully so because they're they're usually isolated storms i was uh, and i was uh, having i was having breakfast or lunch with ted phillips and uh we're junking out i mean we're just having a full on ufo junk fest and I was saying, saying to him that I don't use my tra- any of my trace stuff in my case anymore. You know, I haven't touched it in years. And he goes, when did you first start seeing it? I said, about 2000. He goes, exactly. He goes, you're one of the few people to actually know that. But it seems like since the year 2000, we're not really getting a lot of trace cases like we used to anymore. That's whole thing's kind of dried up. You know, we're not really getting trace evidence or landing type stuff because mm-hmm. we're not really getting – flying saucers anymore we're getting orbs so it's it's changed it's switched into a, a new phase of something or other but the last you know the last one we're not really seeing saucers if we do see saucers i usually say and it's kind of the anomaly because it's the little flying saucers we get a lot of pictures we don't know if they're you know they're not they're the old ones we don't most of them we know that they're not any good with they're a lot of them are i think i'm having a problem here with uh Dave's connection, folks. I apologize about that. Yeah, I just lost audio. <clears throat> yeah. I forgot what my train of thought was. but oh, I lost you for a quick second, but yeah, I got dude. you. Okay. I got you. Well, uh, we were about the, the orbs and uh, how a lot of the pictures of the flying saucers used to be uh, much different. And I really don't even like using that word flying saucer, to be honest with you. Um, 
that that's such well, a it's one of those words like that terms. you know get ten ten full hats us, but unfortunately it's it's kind of part of the whole thing. Yeah, it it sums it up for a lot of people. That's all it, they need. Yeah, they they do UAPs, you know, unidentified aerial phenomena and stuff like that. But you know, it, uh, most of us have watched it progress for a number of years, and at this point in the game, it seems to have changed face again. So this is what we're getting. But no, well, what, what I was saying before, before I lost my train of thought, was the anomalies actually seem to be the really huge ones. You have like the JAL. Japanese airliner coming into Alaska. I mean, that thing, that flying saucer was huge, and the whole crew, everybody saw it. And then you get the Stevensville, Texas one from you know 2007, where that Ricky guy was standing underneath the underneath the saucer, and he goes, "I think it was so big I couldn't see the edges of it." And then you get uh, uh, there's you know dozens of well not dozens, but you get this small oh the the uh, English Channel one, where the guy, people on the plane, and they're looking at it in English Channel, and they're saying this thing's a mile wide. I mean, when they when we see these saucer saucers nowadays, these things are huge, but nobody's capturing these things on video, and that's that's a hang up that everybody seems to be having. What's going on that we're not being able to actually film the saucers on video? We should, you know, there, there has to be video of it around there somewhere. I'm hoping you know, they will come up soon. Charles Lamoureux has a few videos of some objects, and I'm, I'm just talking in particular about that tumbling object. We've discussed it on the show before. Yeah, that was really cool. It, now, that wasn't necessarily saucer-shaped, but it was definitely a lot different from the stuff that looks like you're filming out in the Carolinas, Joe. Well, he, you know, he had a video, and it's still on YouTube, where it, it almost, to me... It it kind of looked like uh, the the candy breath mint uh, a lifesaver, mm -hmm. you know, it, like With a the hole in the middle. Yeah, yeah, right, right, something like that. Uh, but it kind of it looked very fluid like. It, it didn't well, look like a like hard defining outlining lines. It, it it had that shape, but it appeared to to be fluid. Mm. It was pretty cool. It was cool. And it it's. It stopped. It it moved again, and uh, and it, it just looked like it was rotating the whole time. And, uh, and Charles got some, he has some pretty good gear. You know, he's he's got he's got good cameras, and and he's still upping it. He's still doing really good. Yeah, he's a good friend of the show. We should reach out to him. Yeah, he's a great guy. We should have him back on, man. Um, but I also enjoyed a few weeks ago uh, speaking about the uh, the Hudson Valley. UFOs and paranormal stuff around you there, Tip. It had me thinking of returning and wanting to head back to a lot of these locations. You know, it's well, funny. It's funny <laughs> when things happen right under your nose and you don't even realize it until you're you're away from the area. Yeah. Well, you know what? I I haven't. Uh, to be honest with you, my eyes have not been that sure high recently. I've been pretty busy, but um, it's it's that time of year, no doubt about it. It's beautiful out, so. I guess I'm gonna to have to spend some time out there. Yeah, you should think about it. You should you should uh, free up some time and, and get out in the wilderness. You've probably been locked in an office every day. <laughs> it's hey, terrible. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> I'm, I'm a desk jockey, jockey, no doubt about it. Well, I, I've been outdoors every day working, but uh, I'm suffering. It's absolutely brutally hot here. It feels at least uh, the the heat index is at a, a hundred every day, and uh, it's exhausting, man. I'm getting old. That's all I know. Hey, I've been laying poolside, Joe. So wow, well, that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that is also exhausting too. Uh, now the water thing. in the pool is like eighty six, but yeah, well, you poor thing. You know, you had to throw a few ice cubes in there. Man, you have a oh, pool man. at the cabin, well, your your mountain house. No, I, no, that in Central Jersey where I actually live, mm -hmm. where I, where, should, where should I say where I work, is. Uh... Did I lose you again? I no, no, no. Oh no, I got you there. there. I heard a click. I wasn't sure whether I, I got bounced or not. No, no but the, the place where I where, where I I hang here in 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 Central Jersey has a has a you know very nice swimming pool. So that's, that's awesome. It. 
So, Dave, you've you've been at quite a few uh, meetings lately. I've seen you at uh, I saw on Facebook. What was it last? Were you at one last week where where there was some sort of device used for communication as well? Uh, no, it was, no, I could be completely wrong. Forgive me if I am. No, I was, I was at one Wednesday, but it was like Bizarro World. Um, <laughs> I might have I might have misunderstood it. Well, you know, it, the, the thing is, is that when when people when a lot of these UFO groups or meetings that are around, uh, some of them don't really watch the content, and it's just like it's crazy town. Nobody's using any kind of critical thought. It's like people, come on, and you're killing me here, and. And, and being a guy who runs one of these meetings along with the, the, the New Jersey conference, you, I, I kind of use the, our monthly meetings as a way to, to, you know, find speakers, people that, you know, who can defend their research basically, because my conference isn't like a storytelling time. You better be, be able to back up what you say. Yeah. So you get in, you get these people in who want to introduce these people and it's, it's like, you know, the galactic federation of light people. It might as well be. And you're like, oh, you're killing me, you know? And most of the crowd is fairly sophisticated here. So they're like, oh, so you run into, you know, it's, people who have monthly meetings should filter their stuff, making sure that they're disseminating, you know, valid information, I think. So uh, when I run across stuff like that, I kind of cringe a bit, but, you know, it was a free energy device and they were hawking it for $450 on their website and, you know, it was filled with hydrogen and some sort of water mixture and hit with scalar waves or some sort of nonsense and it realigned your body's energy healing, blah, blah, blahs, you know, and it's just like, no, you're killing me here. Will it brew me a cup of coffee? <laughs> it, 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 well, it's, it's supposed to be like a, you know, a, a free energy device and, I was, and you know, I'm a smart ass, uh, admittedly, you know, I, and yeah, I I want to say, well, how do I hook it up to the panel in my house so I don't have to, work, you know, suck off the you know power company anymore? And they'll give you a bunch of like, you know, they'll, they'll give you a bunch of quasi scientific psycho babble, and you're like, yeah, you know, you know, I'm like elect, I'm an electronic engineer by trade. I'm just like that's horseshit. You know, uh, sorry, Joe, I didn't mean, mean to let blur, it's, blurt it's that out. It's not but, me. It's my listeners' virgin ears. I'm concerned. All right, all right so <laughs> you, you run into that type of stuff, and you're just like you're killing me. I mean, it's like it's no wonder we don't we make any headway in this field because, you know, I always say what's old is new in this because it, as you clear off all the crap that we've gone through, and, and we know we're kind of where we stand within the field. Uh, all the new people getting into the field are throwing all this stuff back on the table and like, oh, look at this. I'm like, oh, God, not again. You know, and it's that's kind of how it runs. So it's it's a lot of people get into it and they get frustrated. And it's kind of you you watch them to see how long it hit, takes them to hit their frustration point because they're like, <laughs> oh, it's a shield. And it's like, well, it's kind of way it's always been. I mean, it's like nobody, you know, you could have stuff popping over top of your house like you, Joe, and like nobody notices, nobody will come out to see it. Uh, you know, the, the national UFO groups won't come out to film it and validate it. It's just like, what, what's what's wrong with this field? And it's just like, it's just how it's always been. Yeah. Well, you know, in, in regards to here, I've been doing a fairly decent job on backing off from being so vocal about it because there's so many other people around here that are vocal about it now. Where we're like the other night, I did not post my video for a until two days after it had happened but gary travis was at his beach house in north carolina and he saw them and so many other people between him and i and, and now with uh social media and facebook having a a, a group of the, the myrtle beach area ufo lights all of these people are all communicating so one when as soon as one person sees them and posts it there's many people going outside and filming them and seeing them and uh, still no answers though. There's still no answers at all. And everyone's videos the same. Everyone's stories are always the same. And uh, man, I, I don't know what to say about it. I, I do know that uh, Gary Travis is coming down into town this week, and uh, and I'm going up in his plane with him. That's, I'm really excited about that. Grab your That's camera. Cool. Oh, I'm definitely taking a camera. But you uh, flying at night? I hadn't. I hadn't thought about that yet but uh i hope so 
I hope Come so. Come on, Joe. Do a real chase in UFOs. I mean, I would. I know. But that's the thing. I know he will. You know, he's he has uh, turned his plane directly at these lights and went full throttle. And uh, that, that takes a lot. That takes a lot. So what are you waiting for? Time. That's my kind of researcher. Do it. I just don't have a plane, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's where my man Gary's going to come in. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's up to two. He's got cameras, but now he has uh, – he's gotten uh, the newer GoPro cams. Yeah, right. So he has for uh, shining out of his, his plane. I, I want to say maybe he has more than one camera for the plane now. I'm not too sure, but uh, we sure will. I mean, I, I think it's I think it's fantastic. I mean, uh, just the opportunity to uh, be able to take a camera in an area where there's a lot of uh, anomalous lights. I mean, these lights here have been reported as uh, I told you guys, you know, for a very long time, uh, way before I had said anything about it. It's I, I I wasn't the first person. As a matter of fact, Gary Travis uh, was speaking on it on the news around here before I had even ever saw anything here. I didn't even know anything was going on until I, I saw some lights virtually right outside your house and you see them and you just say, you know, holy crap, like, uh, what in God's name was that? You know, there's, uh, that doesn't even come close. Like I can't even fathom something that even makes any reason to me right now. And, uh, when it happens a few times, uh, that's when I, I had to start looking, saying this. I, it can't just be me who's seeing this. This is just not possible, because I'm saying it's they're lighting up over neighborhoods with hundreds of homes, you know, and they're not that high off the ground, uh, because there's sometimes there's trees in the way, and then there's people like um, like Gary Travis who say he's looking towards my house. I'm looking towards his, and he's 20 miles away, and. Um, I, I don't I don't understand how everyone's seeing the same and uh, you know it, I, I would expect twenty different people over an entire county to say um, I heard some planes or I heard jets you know just one person you know I was thinking you know maybe from the angle I'm at maybe uh, their planes coming from a different way uh, it, uh, still it wouldn't answer how once they turn orange they're just gone they're not there anymore. Uh, but you know, you're, you're really just hoping for an answer to come from somewhere, but it's just, um, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful. There's more people witnessing it and the communication is, uh, much better with social media from the beginning. That was one thing I was hoping for was just more people to touch base with because I would check the MUFON reports on uh, people in the area who would write to move on uh, claiming what they had seen, but it, that left me no route to contact that person or to, to share stories. So I'm happy it yeah, is right. growing in that sense. You know? And uh, maybe we'll get some answers when a vast number of people are taking to it because there's a lot of people around here uh, of all sorts, all professions that are be becoming keen of what's, ha what's happening. You know, it's, it's it's no longer you're just taking someone's word for it. It's hey, go look for yourself. For you know, there's dozens of videos just from last week. I mean, why why doesn't Shaw Air Force Base return any calls anymore? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, the uh, UFOs oh, closed. Well, I mean, the state director Mufon called me and said they use uh, Shaw Air Force Base usually responds to uh, at least on a weekly basis a lot of calls they put in checking, and they said but. They can't get them to return any other calls, and they they won't answer the phone anymore. And uh, they had a direct line, and uh, they had they had shared that direct line with me. And uh, I said, no, I, I haven't heard from them, and I, I'm surely not going to call them anymore. I mean, I don't want to waste their time, honestly. If it's not them, and and they're not looking into it already, I'm just wasting time calling them, my time and theirs. Uh, I'd like to think that they're 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 busy people with uh, with a tight busy schedule, life. you know. I'd like to think so, but uh, it still doesn't answer for the the one time when we had the lights uh, right outside, and I had people here with me, and uh, it was pretty cool to hear with the intention on see something, and. Uh, 
These things lit up right behind a little row of trees that's about 150 feet away. And it was just stationary right behind them. And it was like a, it was like a br- bright pinks and blues. And it just looked like these colors were in a cloud. But it was very different. I hadn't seen anything like that. And uh, this was the time where I had like five or six jets chase after this thing. And the jets were real low. And the jets had no lights on. And, uh, I mean, you could see the jets. Although it was it was night, uh, they they you know maybe a thousand or two thousand feet up, not that far, and these suckers were humming and they chased these lights all over the place towards the ocean and then back inland and then back towards the ocean, and uh, when I spoke with the state director of Mufon about it, they called me back and said, Joe, we spoke with Shaw Air Force Base and. Uh, who's in charge of our airspace for the entire state. Uh, they, uh, she said that Shaw Air Force said all fighter jets were on the ground last night. All fighter jets with, uh, from South Carolina were on the ground. There's no way I saw fighter jets. And uh, she asked me, of course, are, are you sure they were jets? Did you hear them? I'm like, yeah. You know, they, they shook my whole house, you know. Joe, do you still have your Ustream account? I do. I do. But on top of that, uh, by the time she had called me back, uh, I had already gotten from a friend of mine. uh, What's the name of this Air Force? Moody. Moody Air Force, M-O-O-D-Y, in uh, Augusta, Georgia, is the one who sent these fighter jets out that were over my house. So, So Shaw, and this document exists. I have a copy of it. So... For the Shaw Air Force Base director to tell the state director of MUFON that all South Carolina fighter jets were on the ground, he wasn't lying, but he wasn't being completely honest. Because why would fighter jets from out of state be so low over my house with no lights on? Uh, I know they had permission because the document I have was from sent from Moody Air Force Base to Myrtle Beach International Airport, telling them to uh, basically stay out of this area. You know, we're, uh, don't fly planes in this area because we're going to be going through there with no lights on. And in this document, it says they will have no lights on. And uh, it, it, this, this would have been helpful for the state director, I'm sorry, the uh, director from Shore Air Force Base to mention that. Say, so, you know, no, we didn't, but there was testing going on. That's all he had to say. He didn't have to say it was uh, planes from his state or not. Just had to say, yeah, there was testing. Because if they have no problem releasing when testing's going on, why not be honest when an inquiry from an organization such as MUFON calls? It just makes no sense. How often when you do see, you know, filming or not, how often do you see uh, military aircraft at the same time that I don't. you see the lights? I don't. I don't see military aircraft. It's rare. It's so rare. And when I do, it's military helicopters. Um, and they're usually in the area I'm looking, but like hovering and low. And I film them. But to be honest with you, I don't post them because I don't want any problems with the military because uh, I don't know if filming an armed helicopter would help it. any anyone else's cause out there in the world or you know um, I understand why I, I don't know my my line there I, I don't know however to have any military you know Tim I live in a residential area you know right. <clears throat> uh, this is, these are all communities and developments. It's, uh, it's not a choice location for uh, testing any military. I mean, they had a military base here they closed over 20 years ago for this reason because it, it's just not safe. It's, it used to be a small beach community when the military base was built, but that military base is now a shopping mall, so it can't even be used. You know, uh, There is a, a passenger uh, airport here, but 
they test military planes and uh, helicopters, I would imagine, out over the ocean. I know uh, 10 miles off the coast, they do have, like, from 10 miles off to, I think, 30 miles off, they have a restricted area for testing. But I can't see that far. You know, I can't see... I can't, well, first of all, I can't see if there's planes flying along the coast, like, uh, you know, uh, along the beach, they fly banners for, you know, go shopping here or go. I can't see those planes from my house because of the trees. So it would have to be much higher up in altitude for me to film them from my house if they were over the ocean or the beach. And uh, a lot of times they're they're not over trees. They're they're really low. And, and uh, I mean, I don't know how it's possible because you'll see a lot of twinkling lights, and uh, that's what always gets my attention. But just because I see a lot of flashing lights, it doesn't mean I'm going to see anything turn orange. But when I, when these things do turn orange. That's the last I see them. Uh, I might see them again in 10 minutes or an hour or two hours. Uh, but when they turn orange, there's no more flashing lights. There's no sound. You're just standing around looking, saying, like, how, how did that just happen? You know, where did they go? Because it's, there's so many lights, and uh, I, I can't decide if it's a a one a, a two dimensional object you know i sometimes i can't tell if there's a depth to it uh or if when they turn orange they're just taking off away from me very fast uh i i, I kind of rule that out a little bit just because i find it hard to believe that they're always taking off really fast uh away from me all the time where you know i by now i would assume one of them would maybe shoot over my head really fast if they were taking off, but I'm just I'm just really not seeing any of that. I just I I honestly wish I could get an answer for it, but I think there's something to be said why uh, the the powers that be aren't even speaking about it, and and that includes Mufon, in, in my opinion, because if they had any sense in their whole organization uh, for the premise in which it was founded. Uh, they would already be looking into it seriously, at least to to shut me up, you know. But uh, <laughs> instead, they just result in. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. They're they're uh, they should stick to their work. More importantly, uh, there's a lot of uh, good people in the organization, and I don't want to speak for all of them. Uh, however, uh, I I think they should look into these things, especially in this area. I think it would be foolish not to, because it's uh, just growing. More and more people are witnessing and filming them, and and they're all getting together. And uh, I would have even expected the the military to come in and just put an end to all of it, or uh, or maybe answer for if let's say they were flares, uh, and the military were to say yes, this is flares. Uh, it would uh, my next question would be. Why so often are you dropping flares over houses so low? You know, what what good does this do? What is the testing for? And secondly, how are all of your planes so silent? <laughs> you know, how come we've never heard any of your craft yet? These are the well, obvious You know, questions. it's funny. Uh, in the chat room, Noodles9418 wrote, military fighters flying low, uses lots of fuel, lots of noise, lots of vibration. It's dangerous and takes skill. <clears throat> Thank you, Noodles, ninety four eighteen. Uh, well, I mean, I, I mentioned the time they flew over with no lights on. They were really loud, man. It shook the whole house. It shook the I, entire I go house. I go on vacation to Virginia Beach quite often, and um, they they fly the F fourteens like every ten minutes on a nice clear day. And they cruise right over the strip, and it's it's very loud. It does shake. Wow! And it's well, that's cool. that's military hotspot there. I don't get bored of it. Like uh, you know, I, I would imagine living there it would probably be pretty annoying. But yeah, yeah, I've I have seen a fighter jet 
over my house at least on one other occasion besides the the time with no lights on and it was daytime and there were two of them together two fighter jets and and they were they were up there quite a bit uh but i mean you heard them i heard them coming 10 minutes before i saw them you know and uh and in the same once they passed it just got even louder because uh there's really no hiding that sound of an f-14 man they they rumble you know it's weird joe talk to me about there's 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 a weird part of this phenomena like you say you see them in the trees Uh, and earlier in the year someone had had uh an older woman and she was you know she was coming off the off the cork and she had one of these things near a power line and it was wasn't you know whatever it was it was <clears throat> that same magnesium bright white light stuff and it was like sitting there sucking on that power cord and kind of pop off and move around through the trees a little bit and come to that spot allison cruz has film of the same exact thing but uh, i think they also said that the up there that the in Western Pennsylvania, the electric companies are saying, if you see anything strange hovering near the the wires, you know, give us a call because everything, whatever these things were, they were coming in and sucking off, you know, the power lines for the electric company. So that is outrageous, man. That's bizarre, is what it is. Yeah, yeah it really is because it better not be affecting my finances about <laughs> how much I have to pay the electric company. That seems to be like one of the characteristics of it nowadays. So. That's pretty cool, man. I got to look into that. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening. Uh, thank you, Dave. Thank you, Tim. Joe. Thanks, Tim. everybody. I will see yeah. both of you next week. And uh, everyone, take care. Thanks for tuning in. And stay tuned for Alchemical Connections. Have a good, good week, night. all. Good night. Enter into a world unseen on Raven Star's Witching Hour. You will encounter eclectic topics from the realm of spirit brought into our matrix of truth. With your host, the Solaris Blue Raven. Solaris will bring you an array of unique guests covering topics from ghostly spirits to amazing anomalies, covert technology, UFOs, and shadowy global events. And that's right here at Revolution Radio Freedom Slips.com, Saturdays, midnight till 2 a.m. Eastern Time. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Let the magic rise. <laughs> Hi, this is Bo. And this is Rocco. And the Bo and Rocco Show is here to offer insight into legal and lawful remedies. Our goal is to remain free and help others remain free in an ever-increasing police-like state. With the help of our guests, we try to answer questions such as what went wrong and what can we do about it. So tune into Revolution Radio at www.freedomslips.com Wednesday nights, 10 to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to listen to the Bo and Rocco Show. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Revolution Radio. Every Tuesday evening on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, we present our goddess spiritual warrior, Kathy Bilski. I command, I call to the architect of the universe's divine creators and ask for permission to quantum leave the world in all life forms on all planes and dimensions. You need some more speed records in this day and age. You need coverage. Coverage? Oh, you mean them little root weevils that crawl around popping off cameras in your face? Those root weevils write history. 
Many of you know that quote by Jack Nicholson and a few good men. You can't handle the truth. Well, you can, and Event Horizons will give you those truths when you're mad as hell and not going to take it anymore from that memorable scene in Network. You'll know just what to do. We will draw you in and become your news addiction at Event Horizons. Join us Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Time at freedomslips.com at Revolution Radio. Our world team members are Dennis Fetcho, John Ilias, David Dunger, Hila Cass, MD, Melanie Richton, Jim Mars, Paula Harris, John Trallo, Maria Payan, Christopher Husser, DODDS, Jonathan Orchard, and me, your anchor, Dr. Robin Falco. If uh, you decide not to volunteer, it will not be held against you in any way. Sounds dangerous. It is. Very dangerous. Count me in. And that's right here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. Now it's time for Researchers Radio Live, broadcasting worldwide with your hosts, Joe Kiernan and Dave Stanett. Our focus is on delivering the unknown truths about lost historical events, UFOs, and so much more. If you were expecting to be underwhelmed, then you have been listening to your parents' radio a bit too long. This is where facts get separated from conspiracies. So turn up your volume and join us on our journey into the universal mind, where experience, thoughts, and ideas meet the infinite. So stop wandering around in darkness and follow us into the light. Without further delay, here is tonight's program of Researchers Radio Live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Researchers Radio Live. I'm your host, Joe Kiernan, along hosted with our main man, Dave Stanett, who is here, present, and accounted for. Dave Stanett, what's up, man? What's up? What's up, baby? How are you doing? How are you doing? Everything's cool over here on my end. Tim, oh, I'm all sun- Tim, here. Uh, hurting. You're hurting? What you, what, you were out doing yard work? Oh, no, I was doing, no, I was no. out, I was out <laughs> swimming and sunning today, so I'm, I, you know, old white boy got freaking hammered. Excuse me for accusing you of doing some yard work, man. I know. <laughs> I apologize. Well, that's cool. At least you're enjoying the weekend. Oh, yeah. We're close to summertime. Summer equinox. Right. Only a uh, solstice, rather, just uh, right around the corner. Looking forward to it. Nice long day. I'll tell you, man, I really do like it when it's, uh, when it's still daylight at 9 o'clock at night. I could get used to that. It's too bad it, it yeah, goes as quick as it comes, man. I'm too with bad. You, bro. Weather's been really good here. It's been a little hot during the day, but overall, it's been fantastic, man. Just uh, some of those r- random uh, thunderstorms, lightning storms that roll through. And they're usually they're usually impressive, man. I enjoy those, to be honest with you. I really do. They're the they're the fierce ones that just pop up out of nowhere and just throw down some serious lightning and thunder. I yeah, I posted some pictures stuff. Friday, man, because we had some really mean looking. And it's funny because everybody all over has been posting these like really mean looking storm clouds rolling into their area. And it's like, yeah, mean stuff is everywhere. Oh, Joe, yeah. You posted a couple photos. I did. Yeah. Of some storms. Yeah. I saw Dave's too, man. They were pretty cool. They were cool. It was a lot scarier than it looked. It, was, it looked like I was driving into like a, it looked like a, the, like the Milky Way, it's like the rest of the sky was kind of light on both sides, but there's just big black like ribbon that just ran through the center of it. And you're like, yeah, that's really unusual. <laughs> now, I'm sure this has been over broadcasted, but I have to mention it for talking about storms. Did anybody? I'm sure you guys saw this or heard about it. The video of those those uh, guys out in the Midwest filming that that uh, tornado. No, right I, next I, to, oh, wow. I did not see this. Oh Tell man, you've got to check it out. It's crazy. The the it's a vivid video of these. Brave souls. Some may call them brave. Some may say other words. But uh, <laughs> holy crap! They're in. The, they live in trailers out in the Midwest, and this tornado's coming through. I'm sure our listeners have seen it. It's pretty. It was a pretty popular, <laughs> you know, viral video, basically. But uh, yeah, look into that. I'll see if I can find it and shoot. Well, it that's pretty cool. So what they were? They were just a little closer than they should be. Way too close. 
and uh, and they and they survived apparently. Oh, okay. I, I don't know how. Yeah, I, I, no way. They had one last year, Tim, and it was like some old woman. And it was like out in the Midwest, I'm assuming, and uh, they were filming it right out the front door, and there was a huge tornado bearing down on her house and that woman was evoking every name of jesus that she could evoke i mean she was standing <laughs> on the front porch and complete defiance like quoting jesus and going after it and that thing just moved around the the, the basically around her house and allison allison cruz actually turned me on to it and i was just like yeah i'm just like she must like be in like really good standing with the lord because that thing was just should have taken her out i mean it was just like huge and it was bearing down it was like all rumbling and you're like she's toast and it went around to like, holy mackerel. You know, now it's just like, how do you like that one? I'm just like, that's bizarre. Some of the was, uh, really don't even know. Number one, like how they survive. I don't we get even... freak tornadoes up here in, in yeah, uh, the Hudson do. Valley. And uh, a couple years back, not too long ago, right right off, off of uh, Route 84. In fact, if you drive out there, I haven't seen it, but apparently there is a leveled section of woods that's just completely knocked down where the tornado came through and to me that that's just you don't see that around here right but, you don't see it uh, no. north of new york city that often tim wh no. when was that when was that oh, i think it was like uh 2012 something okay. like that it wasn't that long ago well i yeah, I'm, see, Tim, up on the mountain and i think it was the other side of the mountain because we were fly fishing and it was like a big story because you, you never really hear of tornadoes landing in the middle of like the mountains Mm -hmm. yeah, it's you know, and That's right. it's usually in the plains or something like that. But one of these things touched down in this little town, and it just trashed. We're like, wow, look at the devastation! But nobody there expected to have a tornado up in the mountains like that. You know, your elevation is pretty good, and you just don't see them up there. I remember a few years ago, uh, where in Tim's area where he is now, it might be somewhere around 1990, somewhere around there, where uh, just outside of the, uh, I guess it might even be the town of Newburgh, not the city of Newburgh, but. Uh, a tornado had hit an elementary school. Uh, oh, cold! That's right down the road. Yeah. I mean, that, well, well, during, maybe not during lunchtime, now, and it, I lived it wasn't right too good. There. Yeah, that was not. That, <sighs> that did not have good Ham. outcomes. Yeah. The Coldenham Elementary School. Right, I remember not, that story. That's not far yeah. from you at all. There was a bunch of kids in uh, in the cafeteria. The Correct. cafeteria had these really large windows, um, and I remember the stories of kids hiding under their desks and chairs and whatnot were just flying around thing just tore right through the school it was pretty it was devastating yeah i mean it, it was absolutely terrible because it, it, quite a few of the youngsters lost their lives but yeah it's it have was have you guys ever seen a tornadoes chaser show because i've always wondered oh, yeah. they have that like really badass car with all the metal planing and the, the grips to lock it into the ground did those guys ever did a tornado ever get on top of that car because i've always wondered what that car would do if a tornado got on top of it I think some of those guys just can't get out of their, their own ways. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that, that's an adrenaline thing, I think. No, but I mean, I've seen them uh, come close a few times, closer than I'd like to be. But I, I sure would feel a lot better in some of those tank-type uh, vehicles that they make. You know what it is yeah. about those guys? They they have that. I, I don't think they have the death wish. I Look, I, I, I've gone skydiving twice in my life, and it is awesome. I like cliff diving, rock climbing. I I do lots of those types of things, but I like to be in control. When those guys go out there and do that kind of thing, they're at the mercy of nature. And that, that's, like, that's, that's just a whole other animal that I cannot, I just well, You guys rest. know those tornadoes, they, they shift fast, man. Yeah. You yeah. know, the clouds well, don't have to move. They had that one video that was going around, but I, and I don't know if it was Storm Chasers or not, but it was, I think it was just a regular family. But this, this, you know, they thought the tornado was off to the side. And like you said, Joe, it, it starts swinging over to them really quick. Yeah, man. And they ran underneath of a, they parked the car underneath of a bridge overpass, and they all ran up like that concrete embankment and hid like in the structural oh, support sure. of that, you know? And that thing came ripping down, and they were filming it the whole time. But you're like, there's a lot of power in one of those things, and that's, oh, that's some dangerous stuff. I hope I don't have to uh, look one of those dead on, you know, for my life from a well, distance. You're in, the, you're in the Carolinas. You get them down there, don't yeah, you? Yeah, man. We just had them this week. Really? Yeah. yeah just um, Thursday night, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. My brother in law is in Rock Hill and down there in, in uh, South Carolina, and they have the tornado warning horns going off all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I believe it was out that way just on Thursday night. That night <laughs> where I posted the, uh, the lightning and uh, thunderstorm here. Yeah, and you know what was pretty 
uh, not wild. Another <laughs> another sad story was that lightning video that I posted. That one was uh, that one blast to the house not too far from here. Now, wow. what is the deal? Are we the only country on the planet, or, or do I just not?